In this video, I'm going to try to teach you how to install a Yukon locker into a second generation, that's 1989 to 1994, two-wheel drive Toyota pickup, seven and a half inch rear end. Now before you go and disassemble this thing, make sure you find the top of your axle and then you make a mark on your third member so that you know which side is the top and which side is the bottom. You don't want to install this thing backwards when you're all done. Now assuming you don't already know how to do this, you're going to need your 14 millimeter. You're going to have to undo your little brake caliper here. You're going to have to actually pull the assembly out so that it pulls these little gears, your axle shafts, out of the way so that you can undo your 12 millimeter bolts here to pull your third member off. Now once you've got your third member out and start disassembling it, you're going to have your seven and a half inch ring. You're going to have your pinion should still be attached. Don't take your pinion out. You're going to have your carriers, your bolts, and everything. Um, you're going to need a 17 millimeter socket, and you're going to need a 12 millimeter for this one. 17 millimeter for all of your gears and everything that holds these in, which is the big, the four big ones, and then you've got all of these smaller ones which hold your ring on. And last but not least, you're going to need a shop press. Now for my carrier here, I went the original route of just welding everything together so that I had two wheel drive. Well, I'm going to have to break all of these welds because I have to try to press this pin. Try to push that all the way through, get those two top gears out, and once those two gears are out, I can pull this one out and then I can pull this one out. And that's where my new locker is going to sit. Now assuming you're like me and don't have any money, you're going to need to get your chisel or screwdriver, hammer, or something like that. You're going to have to start breaking all of these welds. If you are just starting out, if you've got the money, if you only have the locker and haven't welded it, well, good for you, you rich son of a bitch. But for the rest of us, we're going to have to go through this process so that we can get all this crap out of here. Now get yourself some kind of a pin or a chisel or something that can withstand being pressed. Make sure to stand back because when that sucker goes, which I think it's going to, it's going to shoot off in any direction. I think this is going to be the more arduous task here, trying to find something that'll work. I really want a shield to stand behind. I'm doing this just bending shit so we'll go with something shorter so now is about the point that you start getting really pissed off now rightfully so granted but counterproductive so let's start working smarter not harder three 10,000 pound ratchet straps and a one ounce bolt. Now this time if something breaks it's going to be catastrophic so I'm going to stand off to the side and put the camera up close. bearing sticking out down there. Can't even get my hand in there, so. Now, in order to get these out, I'm just using my chisel and I'm hitting right here on this gear. 
as it pushes that gear outward, it's going to rotate these two gears down and it's going to pull this top gear out this side. Now, let's say your gears aren't welded and all chewed up and everything, so it doesn't... So you're sitting there thinking, okay, I don't want to use this and make it more damage. Well, the only thing I could recommend is put a screwdriver or a flat, a uh, flat chisel or something right there in between the two gear teeth and then hit it. Now, I had to ratchet the crap out of this thing and get this extremely tight. And even then, it kept moving, so... You will find that this is very difficult to get out of here. You're gonna have to hit it really hard and everything else. This won't be easy for damn sure if you weld it like I did. But... Once you break all that up, should all come out nice and easy. Now I could even clean those up if I wanted to. Grind off all that crap and put those back in there and then I'll have my working differential again. But uh, I'm going to be putting a locker in here so I have reliable two-wheel drive and one-wheel drive for when I'm going around corners. So the next thing we're going to do is get out our locker. Definitely gonna need that. Now I paid 250 bucks for this, so your little sticker. You guys aren't sponsoring me, so that is not going on my vehicle. Okay, with everything laid out, here's how we're gonna do this. Take one of these tiny little springs, put it into this little pin here, this little carrier. We're gonna bring this over to this piece. I'm going to place it face down into this one little spot that they have here so that when you push on it, it's spring-loaded. Now what you're going to do is you're going to compress that all the way down, and then this little hole right here, you're going to use one of these little pins to push in there and hold that sucker in place while you're installing it into the carrier. So it should look like this when it's done. So now, take these two suckers, try to get my hand out of the way so we can see here, and we'll do the same for the other side. So here's my two pins, and this now makes sense of why it was so difficult to get that thing out of there. There's actually a pin that goes through here that was in the carrier that instead I just snapped in half. So this pin is actually, it's not on one side, but it is on the other side. I can see it protruding from this side. My gear, my uh, ring goes on this side, so it comes in from this side. So you want to make sure that you chisel that sucker out of there so that you can get this out first. If you're finding that you're having difficulty doing that, well, now you know why. Make sure you watch this video all the way through. And they did not include another one of those pins in the box. Now, one thing that has me concerned is that when I pulled it out of the vacuum packaging, it looked like this. However, according to the diagram, you want this little ring to be facing this way. In their instructions, it shows to put it like that. All right, you've just barely got enough room to fit all of this stuff in there. So I'm gonna make sure everything's aligned. I'm gonna start this pin by hand, making sure that that little hole facing this way because that little pin down there on the bottom one that I forgot to take out this little hole right here now 
Now make sure that you have everything aligned. Because if you don't, right now is the point where we're going to pull these little pins out. And then it's going to get spring loaded. So if you can't see straight through there, you're going to end up screwing up. And then you're going to have to find some way to relieve that spring pressure. So I'm ready. And I'm going to pull these little pins out. And then it's going to push those little springs out into the other carrier. This plate. I pull this pin out, it's going to push that spring out over to here. And it should look like this. Down there's the pin. Now if you screw this up, you might get lucky and be able to put something down in there and push that down and compress that or something. So that you can put that pin back in there and readjust it. You might get lucky if you can do that, so you better make sure you do it right the first time. Now, as you try to push the pin in through this hole here, as you try to push your pin in through there, what you're going to find out is that the back side of this center spacer is going to be pressing out, and you're going to find that it's a little bit difficult to try to pound that pin in there. Just keep hitting it, make sure. What I did was I set mine just like this, one side facing down, I stuck one finger in through the top here and grabbed the other side of that spacer and pulled the top one up. Then I hit the pin with a hammer. Just like this. One finger in, grabbed the side of that and pulled it up as high as you can. Gravity will pull the other one down and give you just enough room to tap this. Don't pound it in with a sledgehammer. Nice and gentle, tap it in. And again, make sure you go slow when you're tapping this because if you got your finger down in there, you will mash it. And there you go. Now, we just put our ring back on using a rubber mallet. Not a hammer. Now again, you're going to need a 17 millimeter socket. Now here's the torque specs for these. And after you've got them torqued down, these little pins of these little metal plates here, make sure you fold those back up so that these don't vibrate loose. Make sure to put your bearings back on. And we place this thing back into the third member. Now, again, if you've never done one of these before, it is pretty self-explanatory. Make sure that your ring, it only goes on one side because you've got the pinion on the other side of the third member. Make sure that you set this whole thing up in the center Make sure that you have the same amount of space over here, maybe about a quarter inch looks like. Make sure you got about a quarter inch. Don't have half inch over here and an eighth an inch over here. Now, the reason you use your 12 millimeter and you take these off is because of these little end pieces, they actually thread in there and that helps to adjust whether or not this thing sits center. Again, if this is the first time you're doing this, 17 millimeter socket. Now when you go to put these in, these do have thread on them for when you screw them in. These two caps here, they do have thread on them. So as you can see, very fine thread, it's easy to screw it up. You can misthread this. So you want to make sure that when you tighten these down, that those threads are aligned on both sides. Now I don't know if there's a special trick to tightening these in, I don't know if there's a special tool, but basically what I do is I just take a little bolt and I put it down right here so that the end is on one of these holes and I just lightly hammer it around until it tightens its way in. Here's your torque specs. Now that everything's assembled, turn your pinion, make sure that everything's working. So now's the time, get your axle housing. Either put yourself a gasket on there or some gasket maker. Put your third member back in the axle housing. 
torque specs. So if you didn't make any marks on your axle shaft, your <coughs> brake assembly here, how do you tell which side's driver's side, which side's passenger side? Well, right here at the e-brake, again, this is two-wheel drive, there's going to be an R and there's going to be an L. One has R, one has L on it. The L, which will stand for left side, R for right side, but I don't like using those terms because let's just use driver's side, passenger side. L is the driver's side and R is the passenger side. But if those aren't on there, one other way you can tell is that your e-brake is going to be facing forward when your hydraulic brake setup is going to be at the top. So that means that this is my passenger side. Now again, if this is the first time that you're doing this, there is a guide plate inside this axle let's just call it an arm here sticking out. There's a guide plate in here somewhere. So if you don't put the shaft in perfectly straight, it's going to get caught right there and then you're gonna be thinking, well, what the hell, why isn't it going in? So just like this, then it stops. Well, you just need to fidget it a little bit, pick up the far end, so you will have to lean this forward and back. until it finally goes in. Now, when you get down there to the third member, when it finally starts to go into that carrier, you will have to start turning the shaft in order to make sure that those teeth line up. Now again, e-brake forward, hydraulic brake system top. Now, break out your 14 millimeter socket. Now, once you've got everything all reassembled, 14 millimeter socket, you can bust the sucker loose and then start pouring your gear oil in there and you're good to go. So this will be driving forward, backwards, forward, backward, forward, backwards forward, backward. Forward, back. Forward, back. It is turning the other one. Same direction, same speed. So, the real test will be when I get this thing on the road. <laughs>